I have all four bolts started. Now we're just gonna crank this up the last bit. Welcome back to Love Life a Classic. And judging by the previous video and all the comments, you guys really want a video on redoing everything on the front suspension on an XJ. This is the same on an XJ6, an XJ12, and the XJS. So from the 70s uh, up until the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. So it covers a lot of cars. We're going to do it on this 1975 XJ Coupe. And I've already done one side, so I'll show you what that looks like. And then I'm going to bring you guys along on the other side. I will be removing the front spring to do this. And I just want to start by saying springs are always, always dangerous. I'm going to show you how I'm doing it and which seems to be a safe method. I would not use this method if I had a front suspension off the car. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm going to be using Jag's original tool for this job. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I think it works really well. However, I wouldn't want to use it if I have the front suspension upside down, sort of in my face. But we'll talk about that. Let me set some light. We'll have a look at the other side. Um, this does take a couple of hours to do. Uh, budget, pretty much a whole day per side. It's it's a lot. Uh, so it's getting sort of late here. And I'm wearing the hat, not because it's cold, because we get mosquitoes coming pretty soon. So my goal for tonight is getting the spring off and if we're lucky maybe getting upper wishbones off we can do the bushings on those but it all really depends on the mosquitoes this is the side that is done as you can see new bump stops new bushings up top new bushings down there in the bottom and new anti-roll bar bushings everywhere upper ball joint and lower ball joint I still have the tool in place to show you what that looks like when it's in place. I'm going to remove it and put it on the other side. And it's very hard to see, but right in there is where it goes. But we'll show you that on the other side. I'm going to remove this and then we'll do it on this side, which you see has old bushings. The top ones don't, don't look that bad. When you take them off, you can crack them in half. The bottom ones... Uh, this side doesn't look that bad, but this side looked, yeah, you see in there, that is not a good bush. And at least on the other side, yeah, the lower ball joint there, it doesn't have any protective um, around it at all. The rubber gator is completely gone, and that one is starting to go as well, or just sort of dust shield. So let me set up the tool for you guys, show you how it works. And then we'll also talk about different methods of getting that massive spring out. This is what the tool looks like. It's a long threaded rod with a handle here where you can thread up and down. And then there is this, which fits on sort of a ball in there so it swivels around. That fits up into your spring, lower spring holder plate here. And the bump stop in there is screwed with two screws right hard to see but right in there and they line up in here then it gets locked in top like this and now let me see if i can turn it and this locking collar you see has an indent there not on that side you put the locking collar over and then when there's pressure on it the indent goes in and locks it so it can't pull out and then you need to push it down and you can pull it out it goes in through the bottom up here all the way up through there and up the top there so we'll put that in in a second and start getting the spring out so you basically compress it once you've done that you can loosen there are four bolts and then there are two nuts here and you slowly loosen the tension down so I want to talk about one thing with this, of course, is safety. If something were to happen and the spring would let go, you don't want to be in the way for that. And that's why I'm saying this method, I think, works really, really well when you have the car like this. So I'll show you guys in a little bit that when this threaded rod is up in here, 
I only have maybe 10 or 15 centimeters to the ground and I don't put any part of my body under there because if it were to let go, it's just going to shoot straight down into the concrete. Um, it's going to be, you know, make a mess, um, but I probably won't get hurt. The other method of working on front suspension, of course, is take the whole thing out, flip it upside down, and then remove the springs. If you do that with a tool like this and something were to happen and it does slip, you have a projectile that can shoot straight up into the air. For those sort of methods, I would probably use one of these and at the same time have threaded rods as well in there. So you can remove one of these bolts at a time, put a threaded rod with the same thread as these, and then have nuts on there and slowly get this plate out. Um, so yeah, if I would be doing this on the ground with this upside down, I would use both methods just to stay extra safe because otherwise you have a projectile that can shoot straight up into the air. But enough of that sort of safety announcement. Let's put this thing into place and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I'm going to sit here on the ground and I have the car raised up high enough so I can get the tool in place. It's about 70, 75 centimeters long, so it's a pretty long tool. So it goes up through here and up there is the hole. I'll do a shot from this angle when it's in place so you guys can see that. But I like to put the light up there so that I can see what happens. And then you can get that in there and line it up. So you see, if it were to let go, at least the knife here, just going to hit right down to the ground. So as long as I don't have anything underneath there, it should hopefully be fine. So locking collar goes that way around. Get the tool up in there. Get the locking collar into place. And there we go. And I spin it around here and I'll show you guys in a little bit just to show that it is completely locked in place. So that is really the first step. Now you're ready to line these indents up to here and then start winding it up. But I'm going to grab the camera and show you guys that it's completely locked in place. Then we'll start winding this thing up, get some attention off these bolts, loosen them up, and then slowly wind the spring out. So that's where the hole goes up in between there. As you can see, if I lift it up, you can see that piece of the machining. So it is locked in place. Now I'm going to get this all moved into the right position, start tightening this down. Um, in the beginning, it will be enough just to use this. After a while, you will need to put some you know, metal tube on there to get more leverage. There is a hole here in the bottom so you can stick a metal tube by stuck a screwdriver in there so that this doesn't spin while you tighten it all up. I'll set that up for you guys, and then we can start getting some tension on this spring. We're almost ready to go here. I've kept my flashlight up here, so a little bit off screen for you guys, but just so I can always see that nothing's happening up top with the locking mechanism. This is pretty much in the correct position right now. And as you see, I have a screwdriver down here through that hole just to keep everything as it should be. And I just really want to feel that it's all in the right position before we start really tightening too much. And it all looks really, really good. So I think I'm just going to turn it a little bit. That way I can see the locking mechanism up there more clearly. And now it's just a matter of starting to wind it and feel free to use raw this is just a jack handle just to make the job a little bit easier you guys are almost a little bit in the way there with the camera but I want to get you guys in close so you can see what I'm doing the only thing I want to do now is get a little bit of tension off of these bolts here you don't want to let them go and strip them out or god forbid you let these out and this whole plate just shoots down so 
this is also a good time to test the tool a bit because you want to make sure everything is good and tight. So I'm going to start loosening these up. And the whole time I am very, very worried that I don't want to put anything, any part of my body underneath the tool or really too close to any of this. There we go. That is completely loose now. Now it's just a matter of winding the tool down as we wind it down the spring is slowly going to come down at least that's the plan so um yeah here goes nothing you can feel that there is a lot of tension on the tool so i'm just going slowly once again looking up there making sure it's not moving at all as you can see now it's already going down. I'm going to try to knock these up. So, yeah, they're loose, so they're coming down. No problem. Just make sure it's not binding on anything. And there we go. Now this part of the tool is coming down, so the spring is fully decompressed. Yeah, that is uh, that was some stressful times. So just go lower down the tool, loosen it up up there, and take the spring completely out. But that is pretty much the worst of this job done. It's as bad putting it back in, but when you've gone this far, um, at least you have a couple hours until you need to do that again. And there we have it on the ground. These plastic rings here, I think they call them packings in the manual, not really sure. But just note where they went. There was one under here, two up top. Put them back wherever they came. Um, they're supposed to be there. Same goes with any shims that you find. There will be shims up here at the upper ball joint. Put those back where you found them. My method of taking this apart, we are not going to touch the shims up here at all. Um, but if you do, just uh, note where everything goes and put it back again. So now all of this is safe to work on because nothing is really under tension. It's just held down by gravity and it's on the bump stop right now. I'm starting to lose light here, so I'm going to do a couple things uh, off camera, but I'll tell you about them because we've done it many times here on the channel, and then we'll continue tomorrow when we have daylight again. These anti-roll bar links, I'm going to loosen the top part of it just, the bottom can still be on there. I'll show you why tomorrow. So loosen that top nut, remove it completely, and that washer and the rubber piece there. and. I'm going to loosen the caliper. So there are the two, let's see if I can turn this, ah, uh, steering locks on. But there are two caliper bolts, and then there's one more bolt sort of holding the bracket that also holds uh, the brake hose on, and the bracket that goes down, let me see if I can film this. Um, the bracket that goes down here, to the tie rod end. So I'm going to take the tie rod end off, and that bracket in this thing. And I will suspend that up here. You can get a zip tie, like a thicker one, behind here, and you can suspend all this up here so you don't need to uh, bleed the brakes or anything like that. 
I rebuilt all the brakes on this car last year, so I mean, pistons, there's new pistons and everything in here and everything's great. So just gonna hang that up here, it's out of the way. And then tomorrow we will do uh, upper wishbone, lower wishbone, bushings, ball joints, and all of that. But I'll do that and then I'm gonna call it a night and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As you can tell by the light, it's the next day. So I got the caliper hanging here. I just used two sets of zip ties just because I was leaving it overnight so it wouldn't fall down and break that new brake hose. There is the steering arm off or bracket and those bolts. So now everything is pretty much loose. Got this to take off like we talked about. Then I like to remove the shock down here in the bottom. Then I'm going to remove the upper ball joint from here. Then the lower ball joint, then this whole hub carrier can be taken to the workshop to replace the lower ball joint. Easier to do that in a vise to hold this because you have to knock some things out of there. The upper one is just bolted in place, so we can do that later. When you take this apart, you'll see in a bit there are shims. Make sure they go back exactly where they came off. I'm going to remove one wishbone at a time up here. Uh, instead of touching the main mounting thing here in the back, just because then I don't need to worry about the shims or anything there. And then we will do the lower wishbone as well. Well, I need to loosen these up. Um, many different ways to remove ball joints. Uh, you can, you know, whack on them, use a little bit of heat, an induction heater if I need to, and just get, you know, a fork in there and pry them off. There we go. That popped. Since you're replacing these, you can use a little bit of heat because you don't damage them. The other side, I had to do that um, and I used my induction heat. We'll see if I have to use it on this side. If I don't, I'll do a separate video showing that because it's a pretty cool tool. And I just heated up here and just popped. And it didn't even uh, disturb the rubber or anything. So it was a great tool. So it's this is loose now. I'm going to just make sure I can loosen these two bolts up here and then I gotta get a jack stand under here, loosen um, the shock so it doesn't get supported by that when I remove the nut here and then remove that and then I'll show you guys when we get the lower ball joint off which in my opinion is usually stuck a little bit more. In case of ball joints um, if they just spin, you can usually, especially now that I'm, I'm gonna get rid, throw this one away, you can remove the dust shield, the rubber there, and then get a vice grip in on it, and that will let you turn it. I have a jack stand underneath, just because it's gonna fall down when I remove this one, but I'm just loosening this one up before I remove the top one. So I'm going to see if I can knock it down while there is minimum sort of, uh, I can't think of the word right now, not support, uh, minimum weight on it because this whole thing is right now being supported by the top ball joint with just a couple threads. So, let's see if that works. Just a little, little bit more. Okay, now that's just a couple threads left on there. And you can try a couple different methods. You can always hit with a hammer around the side to try and loosen it up a little bit. Uh, get the fork in there. Because I'm throwing it away, I can hit it from the top. So we can try all of them and try and get this one off. Because on the other side, it was stuck pretty hard.
There we go. A little bit of leverage on there after hitting it on the side. And that came off. So now I'm going to loosen the top one. This is going to fall down uh, onto the jack stand here. Then we can loosen the last of the bottom one and take the whole hub off. So let me see, that is that three quarter, I think. Yeah, and now we have the issue of it turning, but we have the vice grip. There we go. Now it's loose from the top. And you can loosen it here, but I got it just... It's going to be hard because I'm going to block you guys, but... I don't want to drop this and I don't want to block you guys, but let me see if I can get this off and still sort of at least try to hold on to it. Now, that is the whole hub loose. You can take that to the workshop, clean it up a little bit, and we're going to remove and replace the lower ball joint in there. These um, are the greasable ones. They're the original ones and they have shims in them. The ones that will be replacing them are the more modern ones that came on the XJ40, uh, which are better, but you need to do a tiny bit of modification to get them to fit. I mean, it's just hitting something up, but we'll go through that. Uh, so put this aside for now. These are loose. I'm gonna loosen up up here so we can remove one of these at a time. I'll show you how to replace those bushings. That's really straightforward and then get the lower bushings which are pretty straightforward as well uh, but a, yeah a tiny little bit more work than the top ones I've just loosened these a little bit with the breaker bar so they're nice and loose and I'm gonna remove this uh, this ball joint here it the um, these are these are really straightforward the top ones just need to be wary of the shins and I think when you're doing this, you should of course follow along with the, the manual. You have all the torque specs and everything in there. Um, and they're also very clear that they go from the front to the back of these bolts. I don't know exactly why that is so important, but it is. So I'm just pointing it out. But yeah, so a lot of the worst of it is over, or there is one more thing that can be severely stuck on these. Uh, if you're lucky, it's not. And that is, there's a giant bolt, I guess you'd call it. It goes all the way through here to the back that holds the lower wishbone in place. And if you're unlucky, that is corroded. Uh, but it shouldn't be. You should be able to get that out. but. We'll tackle that when we get there. So we'll see what kind of shims we have here. So we have two on the front and one on the back. So we'll lay those out. So yeah, that was it. And that is what the uh, upper ball joint looks like. You can see it has had, it's rusty inside and quite notchy. So it's a good thing we're replacing it. Now we can get one of these off and they're the same on, on both sides. We'll get one off and I'll take that up to the workshop and show you guys how to replace those fishings and then I'll do the same on the other side. Also be replacing the bump stops because they have some cracks in them. It's just an easy thing to do while you're in here, but these can be replaced pretty much in the car. If you put some weight on the suspension, you should be able to get pretty much get them off. Once again, just make sure you're aware of which order everything goes in. There's that washer, then there's that washer. And then all slides off and there is this washer. 
take it off my fingers. Yeah, that goes here on the inside. Take this up to the workshop and fix it, but you can see here, you can see the cracking here and they're rock, rock solid and they will definitely break when we take them off. So we'll take this up to the workshop. I will take, I'm just gonna put this on here so I don't mess it up. And then I'll take these up as well, clean them up a little bit and ready to reassemble. So let's go to the workshop and replace that bush. Here is the bush and we have a new bump stop and we have the new bush here. Open it up and show you guys. Comes in two parts and you just press it together. All you need is a vise, really. To get the old one off, you can just get a screwdriver and pry it. There's one side. And there went the other side. So you can see there is just a little bit of rust in there. So I'm just going to clean that up. A little bit with a piece of sandpaper. There we go. Just gonna clean it out. And we're pretty much ready to install. These are just really, you can start them off with your hands and then get them in the vise to get them in just the last little bit. go slowly make sure that everything's going in nicely there we go now it's just the bump stop which is really straightforward as well there okay the old one out and just thread the new one in i'll do the other side as well we'll put these back on with the new upper ball joint and then remove the lower wishbone the other side is basically in place you technically have the brake line out of the way and i forgot to say this but you don't always need a vise to get these in if you have a little bit of spray lubricant on you can push them in by hand and that will help on this side where the brake hose is a little close. So I put this on with just that bush in place and I push the other one in by hand to get it past here. Technically, if you're doing a job like this, uh, you're probably going to be redoing your brakes and doing a lot of things. But just because all that's new and we're a bit of a time crunch, I'm not doing that. But that's a little tech tip to get it past there. If you don't tighten this up fully, just tighten it a bit. It will tighten everything up when it's all back together and we put some load on it. Now I can put the upper ball joint in with the bushings. That's really, really straightforward. Uh, and now I think it's time to get the lower wishbone off. So I thought I'd film a little bit before I get too ahead of myself. So depending on if it's a six cylinder, a 12 cylinder, right or left hand drive, things will be more easy, more difficult. On this being a six cylinder left hand drive car, the, this can be removed on the passenger side by just sort of removing one of the mounts for the steering rack and pushing that down a little bit. However, on this side, you need to fully remove the steering rack and the exhaust. Because this bolt here, which goes all the way through here, and then there's a castle nut up here, which I've loosened, that will hit the exhaust. So I have removed the steering rack. We've done that many times on the channel. Nothing really too difficult about that. 
uh, and then I need to go and remove a piece of the exhaust. Not too difficult as well. So once we've done that, this will here continue to slide out. I can get this out and go and replace these bushings. You can see they, yeah, they're pretty bad. Steering rack out of the way, exhaust out of the way. And this should just slide out. I'm gonna need a second hand to catch it, but you see, now it slides out with no problem. So I was pretty lucky, everything came off really easily. Fortunately, that means I can't show my new induction heater, but I think we may need to do a separate video on that thing because it's a really cool tool, but uh, everything came off pretty nicely. And I have new seals and gaskets at home all the time for these things. Back at the bench, here is the lower wishbone. Here are the bushings we're going to replace. These actually look better on this side. Uh, let me see if I have... This is one of the ones on the other side. So yeah, definitely need to be replaced. You can do it with a vise, um, no problem at all. Just get a big socket, small socket. Sorry, let me see. Big socket, smaller socket, and push it out. However, I have the luxury of having a press, so I'm gonna use it. So let's go over there, press these out, we'll clean it out, and then we'll put in new ones. So pretty straightforward. We're gonna get this in here. And just make sure that it's in on the edge. This is a good thing if you have a press. Um, old brake discs. These are from a Fiat 500. And they're really, really good at uh, yeah, giving you lots of options and holes and things. So you push things out. And yeah, I'm not using any pressure really at all. It's just, I have a press. I'm using it. Uh, I don't think you technically need one. I've done this with a vise as well. So yeah, pretty close there. Just gonna get that a little bit more and then the last I can just whack it out with a hammer. Uh, so I'll get this one out, get the other one out, and then I'll show you the insertion of the new ones. I've just cleaned up both surfaces a bit. And I just wanna clarify in case someone's in the comments, no, these are not press-in bushings, uh, like the kind with a steel edge around it. However, I am using the lowest setting on the press, and it's just because it's an easy way to make everything go in straight. I'm using just a little bit of a lubricant on it, just so that it will slide in as nicely as possible. And I can sort of start it by hand. You see, I could almost push it in a lot by hand. So it started there by hand. And I use a little bit. Everyone has different techniques. We're doing this and ah, this works for me. I don't want to go too far. So I have to take it out again. But let me see. It should just come through on the other side. That should be pretty good because it has to go in there with a washer and things. So I think that is pretty good. I'll do the same on the other side. And then we're ready to put this thing back on the car. Here we have the old ball joint. And this is a style that's greasable and there's some shims in there, things to adjust it. The new ones are sealed. And you see, they're a little different. They are lower as well. So you will need a different set of bolts. Kit should come with those shorter bolts and they have Loctite on them because you don't use these locking rings anymore or tabs. So I'm just going to hit these tabs 
back here. And this, this is four bolts, and then the lower half of the ball joint comes off, and then the top bolt is loose, or like the ball part of it. However, there is a bit of a collar that's still left behind, and you need to get that out of the way, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's see here. Just regular half inch here. There's nothing really wrong with these greasable ones if they've always been greased and you know you haven't gotten dirt in them or anything and they last really well i still have the greasable ones on my xj12 i still have them on my daily driver as well except on one of them is a little worn on daily driver so i'm going to be replacing them on that but you can sort of over pack it with grease and it works fine but that is on my to-do list for that car but the xj12 ones they're still great that car seems to have always been well cared for and greased. These just have a lot of dirt in them and see there's nothing left of um, the protective uh, sort of dust shield there. So let's just pat that off. And there is the ball and the ball joint. And what is left behind is this sort of collar here that the ball rides on. So in order to get that out, you just put the ball in the other way and you tap it out. There you go. Now this will fit. I'm going to clean up this surface here, just all the old grease on the inside, make that look nice, and then we'll fit this one. That's a bit cleaner. So now just put that one in. And we have the new shorter uh, bolts. Can't remember the torque spec up the top of my head, but we're gonna go through when everything is together on the car. I will torque everything again. Just go through it. Uh, remember torque spec for the big nut up there. Uh, that was somewhere around 70 newton meters. But uh, I have it all written down. And we're going to go through all of that when this is back in the car. So we'll just tighten these down here. We'll go back to the car. We'll fit the lower wishbone. Then we can fit this part. And I'll do, I should do some anti-roll bar things as well. But we're really close to getting everything back together. Got the wishbone here. And I've already tried it once, but it seems to be perfect. There's a tiny bit of space, and that's for the washers. So that's perfect. Make sure you put the right weight around. Here are the little washers. And what I'm gonna do, this thing came out pretty nicely, but uh, be nice to the next person. Just a small smear of anti-seize on it. So, you know, the next guy can get it out as well. This will be a little bit different the film because I don't want to cover obscure your guys' view too much but it's just a matter of getting a washer into place might be difficult to deal with the camera you can only keep the camera really in one spot and then yeah sorry I'm blocking you guys but I'll show you guys in a little bit
we go. That's what you see. It is a little bit of a tight squeeze. That's why you don't want to put the uh, bushings too far in. So even if you thought, you know, there's a little bit of play before, it's, you see how tight it is here. We could have even gotten them out a little bit, but this will be perfect. There we go. Now that's in place. You can hear the washers. That's why you don't want to over tighten this because you're just going to ruin it. So I'm just going to put the outer washer here and the nut on, not tighten anything else at all. This is perfect for now. And then we can start putting this back together. I will be doing one thing. You've seen videos on this. Because I have the anti roll bar apart, I will be replacing the bushings. I've done the other side. So I'm going to replace that. And then I have a new rod here and new rubber for this part. So this mounts on here and goes up into that. So I'll be replacing that and putting this together. And then we can put it all in with the hub, the ball joint there. And then we just gotta replace the upper right, one. So it's a little bit later and that bush is replaced and here is the new part here which later goes up here as the anti roll bar. The only other thing I've done is fit the upper ball joint with remembering that two shims in the front and one in the back and made a different on your car. Now you just start preparing things to getting the uh, uh, whole hub back on and all of that. So that sits on here it goes up into the roll bar and then you have this bracket on here which goes through the shock and on there so we're going to put all of these parts on first please excuse the sound uh it is raining a lot uh, this summer here and i'm not down here with a metal roof i can't do that much about it unfortunately These are the bolts that later go all the way through the uh, uh, the bottom that holds the spring on that the spring pan. So I'm just gonna put them in here for now, and then I'll put a nut on the bottom of them just to hold them into place. But of course, I'm gonna tip that one off later again. Just trying to get them in here. Perfect. So that will then hold all of this in place. Getting the anti roll bar part in there also helps relieve some of the strain from the shock when you put it all back together. And you can see if you can, yeah, so you can push this up a little bit just to get this on a couple of threads at least. Now we're getting ready to get the whole hub assembly on there. It is the lower one first and then the upper one. So I am going to we'll move this all back onto that side. And we will remove this nut here. And I'm gonna go get the hub, slide that into there. 
and then we've made some pretty big progress. Perfect. Okay, this is starting to get pretty heavy now, so I'm just gonna use a jack to raise it up and get the top one in. There we go. Start the whole lined up. Just a little bit more. Perfect. I have my washer and nut here. Perfect. So that is in place. Now I'm going to tighten them down. Uh, we'll torque everything down when it's all in, but just snug it down for now. And I'm going to put the caliper back on. I'm going to put the steering arm bracket thing back on. And then we're pretty much ready to start getting the spring back in. But uh, I don't mean to do that tonight. It's starting to get a little bit late here. But tomorrow morning, I'll put the spring back in. And then, well, this part of the job is done. It's just time to put the exhaust back on and the steering rack. And then when the car is back on the ground, we can tighten everything down and check all the torque and everything and make sure that everything is as it should be. There we go. It's the next day and we got some good light again. As you can see, I finished up last night by putting the caliper back on and everything. So we're ready to get that spring back on. It's pretty much the same as getting it off, so I'll mount it all up, we'll get the camera in place, and then we'll start winding it up again. When it goes on, you gotta be careful to line up everything. The one thing I have done is I've gotten the bolts down, just make sure that all the threads are good, so that's not an issue. And then once you're pretty close, you can pr gently persuade it to one side, either a little bit with the jack, or give it some taps with a hammer and it will move over and everything will slide into place. You can get these two in first and then when those are guiding it, as the more you tighten it in, you'll be able to get these in and then you'll get be able to get those in. So I'll set all that up, set the camera and uh, we'll get spring in. Got the tool in place, double check that it's locked. Cleaned all the threads here, got the nuts off here and I'm going to just start winding it up. The spring isn't touching up there yet. So once it is, I'll move this over, line everything up, and go from there. Now it's making contact up there. So we'll just sort of start lining it up again. Even when it's under a lot of tension up there, you can still sort of move this around a little bit. Some gentle, persuasive taps. But once again, I'm keeping well clear of the bottom of it. And I have a flashlight up here. Once again, having a really good look at that locking mechanism. So make sure I don't see any movement in it. I have one of them in, just a couple threads, so a tiny bit more, and I can start putting that nut on. I just push the other one up a bit, and then use a screwdriver here to line things up. But yeah, we got two or three threads through there, so a couple more turns. But I can get that nut on. Just 
get it on there. Couple of turns. And now I can start knocking the other one down a little bit. Let's see if we can get that one into place as well. The rest of them, they do pretty much line up really easily. That it's just really important that you clean the threads and make sure that everything goes well with them because you don't want to be stuck in this position and cross thread any bolts or have things that don't want to go in. I have all four bolts started. So now we're just gonna crank this up the last bit. But it is important that you do, using this method, that you do these two first and then get those. Because if you just do one side, it can be skewed and you can't get the other ones in. And you want to be really careful about these threads. So you got to think about it. These four bolts plus those two over there, that's what's holding these springs in. And notice how massively strong they are. One thing we haven't talked about is... Of course, this would be a good time to replace springs if you want to, but we, we're not doing a full restoration on this car. The owner, there's nothing wrong with the shocks and springs. Um, it's just everything else. And same if you have a car that might have some rust, these could be definitely bad. Um, removing these if they're rusty, uh, a little bit more dangerous. So, um, yeah, use that information as you will. Um, just be safe. But now it's the same as the beginning, we're just going to crank this up and compress this thing a little bit so we don't really have any load on those bolts. And then I'm going to fully tighten them down. These are all tightened and I've loosened the tool so there's no tension on it anymore. So with that, everything on this side is replaced. We're going to go through and torque everything and I'll let you guys know what the torque specs are. But before that, I'm going to put the exhaust back on and put the steering rack back on. Um, that's pretty straightforward. So join me once that is done. Everything is back in. Steering, all the hoses, exhaust, everything. Only job left to do besides torquing it all down is the tie rod ends. They're really, really stuck on here. So uh, I'm going to just loosely put them back in here. And then we'll get the induction heater out. We'll heat them up, hopefully get it off. Put new ones on and then we can get the car back on the ground all right so i'm going to show this induction heater here it works really well this is one of those coils that you wind yourself and then also like most of these kits they come with a couple of pre-wind the issue here is this tie rod end the locking nut there is on there so tight and i remember uh last year we were going to replace a gator on the other side steering gator and it just did not want to budge uh even with uh you know, heating it with gas and everything it just did not want to budge at all so this year we're going to get them off because we need that for the alignment shop and i'm going to replace the tie rod and so let's see push the button now and it's already smoking and the interesting thing is this can be like glowing hot i'm not going to doesn't need to be that hot I tried on another piece of metal. I can have something this far away be glowing hot, and then the rubber over here is completely fine. This smells really, really hot now. Oh, I'm gonna turn that off. Turn the machine off. We'll move this coil to the side, and then see if we can get this off. Gotta be careful. Everything is pretty hot. to the side yeah, you see how yeah, the coil's not that hot but I still don't it's don't want to burn myself 
Okay, let's see if we can get this off now. And this was impossible last year. It was still really tight, but it was possible. I mean, last year I tried with a really long metal bar on top of this, but now it actually came off. And yes, I'm replacing these, but look at this. I can touch the rubber on here. This isn't hot at all. It's just what I wanted to heat up that's hot. So let this cool down. I'll replace that tie rod. Then it's time to get this thing a little bit lower down and torque everything down. We're almost ready to lower the car back down. I'm going to put it on ramps then just to make it easier to tighten that nut there. That one is important that you tighten when, like we talked before, there's weight on the suspension. The other one's not so much. So I've torqued everything else down. There are not really torque specs for everything, so some things are just tight. However, there is a torque spec for the lower ball joint and nut on there which is somewhere between 45 and 55 foot pounds. I've done the top one the same. Then there are torque specs here. For instance, you have the upper wishbone. So the nuts there on the side is 49 to 55 foot pounds. And then the lower one is about 32 to 50 foot pounds here. But when we tighten that one, you also want to make sure that it lines up so you can get a split pin in there. The only thing I've left to do is torque these down. So I'll torque those suspects we just said, and then lower the car down, and uh, we'll do the last nuts over there. On to the final job now. Car is pretty much as if it were on the ground. We have weight on the suspension, so I'm going to torque that nut in there. Have a torque wrench here. Torque it up, get a split pin through there. And then this massive job is finished. They're both torqued now and we have split pins on both sides. All right, I'm quite tired now, but this front suspension is rebuilt. And I hope that you guys were able to follow along and that you liked this video. And yes, it is something I think you can do by yourself if you feel mechanically inclined, if you have a good place to stand, you know, a good solid floor and get the car high up enough, definitely. In the future, we should do a video on the other method, and I think I'll do that when I have a French suspension out of a car. Don't know which one it will be, but probably at some point in the future, we're going to do that, and you will see the threaded rod method. There's a lot written about it on the forums as well, so if you want to try that method, feel free. It works really well. Uh, I just say this one is probably just a little bit quicker. Um, so what is next for this car? I just got called that the new tires, front tires, have arrived. So uh, we're gonna pick them up tomorrow, have them mounted, and then sometime early next week, I have a, a uh, trip to the alignment shop. So they can check everything. Hopefully everything will be good and there won't be any issues and it won't wear out its new tires. Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Till next time, I'm Adam. This was Loma for Classic. I'll see you soon.